Imagine watching a business go from zero to overwhelming inquiries and then get suspended when it's done nothing wrong at all. And then it's up and running again and I reveal all the strategies I used to get it up and running and ranking locally. So what I'm gonna do in this video is actually let you see the real recordings I took of how I did exactly that. So if you want to optimize your business or learn how to optimize other businesses and sell that as a service to help other local businesses, and then this is gonna give you the information and show you exactly the step-by-step -step guides I used to do that very thing. So this video is packed with everything you need. So sit back and watch now as you see the ups and downs of a real business on Google Maps. So for a long time, I wanted to make a video like this that takes a real business and takes it all the way through. And fortunately, I've now got an opportunity to do that with a business that needs to be registered correctly. And then we need to then show the whole process. And you're going to join me on that as we go through that over the next few weeks. But just in case you're not 100% sure on what Google My Business is, in effect, it's the greatest way you could optimize your business. You may have heard of SEO search engine optimization. Well, this is a way to put your business in front of your customers so that you get local customers phoning you up. It's a bit like Checker Trade. It's a bit like Yellow Pages or Yale. It's a bit like perhaps other indexes and citations you've had before, but this is with Google themselves. So it puts you on Google Maps. It puts you before people when they're searching. So the next person who searches for a plumber, they find your business coming up in the search engine. And of course, going forward, people are using voice search, they're using Google Maps, they're using Google search engines, they're using devices, they're using tablets, they're using mobiles, they're using laptops. All these things are being used to find businesses locally. This is going to show you how you can make sure your business is in front of the right eyes on a local basis. So this is a really valuable set or series of videos I'm going to be making now. And I want you to make sure that you don't miss one along the way. So make sure you subscribe. And if you click the bell, it will notify you when the next update comes as well. So that's really important if you want to follow this series. Now, as this episode runs, it will come across various issues and problems that no doubt we all find. And I'm going to show you my workarounds. I'm going to show you the tools I use, some of the software that could be used as well. So you'll find that as this series progresses, it will start to build your business too. And you'll find that you're gradually getting more interest. You're getting more clients you're more customers. But you may come across a few problems too. And those things will be addressed as we go along the way. So how's this video actually going to work in this series? Well, it's a little bit, it reminds me very much of the time when I used to have adventure books. So probably just before the internet came along, you could choose your own adventures. So maybe you've got books that you've come across like that before. This choose your own adventure style was that you would be in a situation and then you'd have to make a choice. If you want to go out through the door, then go to page five in the book. If you want to go out through the window, go to page 27. So you would choose one or the other, which was what you wanted to do. And then when you ended up there, you would then get another choice and so on. And that's the way these videos are going to work. A bit of a different way of using videos on YouTube in this particular episode, this particular series that I'm going to be doing. That I want at the end of the video, I want you then to choose which way you want to go. So on this video, you're going to see in a moment that you'll type in your business and then from that, you're going to see which way you need to go. Do you need to register it as a brand new business or do you need to make a claim for that business? Now, let me show you how that works by jumping in right now. This is how it works. You go to business.google.com and there you type in your business. And it's just important to know which type of business are you to know where to go from here. So let's, for example, say that you were called Keru. So this is just a fictional one that I know doesn't exist. So you notice here, Keru doesn't come up. It's never been registered as a business. So you would then create the business with this name. But as it works out, I know that uh, the company that I will be registering is called LaRue and LaRue Window Cleaning, which is the one we're going to cover. And you notice it does come up. So that is the business that I'll be optimizing. And so that's why you need to choose at this stage, when you type in your business, does it exist as in this one does, 
or does it come up where it doesn't exist so that in effect you then have to register a new business so that's a choice you need to make at this stage so by the end of this series you would have learned exactly how to optimize your business for google my business you would have learned the fundamentals and you would have learned really all the things that i would do if you employed me to run your business for you. So this has great value, this series that I'm going to produce because in effect, it's ideal for those that want to run their own business or manage their own business. It's ideal for those that perhaps want to manage other people's businesses and see how the professionals do that. It's ideal for people that already have their business, but they want to optimize it. They want to learn some of the tricks along the way. And it's ideal also if you've already done your business, you just want to know, have I done the right things? Have I perhaps picked up some bad habits? Are there things that I can do in the coming year that will get me ahead of the competition? Well, this series of videos is going to cover all those things and empower you to help you do the right thing and to find out tools that maybe you've not come across before. So in effect, as a web designer of 22 years, I'm going to use my experience to help you along the way. And I have to say, I've gone to various SEO marketers. I've gone to, down the avenue of doing SEO, search engine optimization. And I've always been very disappointed with the results they've produced. But I'm not disappointed with Google My Business, which is why it's probably the most powerful SEO that you could do for your business today. And that's why we're going to spend quite some time on this series going through these various episodes and choices that you need to make. And why do I think this series is going to be of value? Well, I say it's free because in effect it is a value because this is the very thing that I'd be doing for your business. I've had quite a few people ask me, would I manage their business? And I had a choice. Do I want to do that or do I want to just provide you so I can empower you to do your own optimization on your business? And in many ways, because Google My Business changes, because you know your business better than I do, then this felt that this would be a way to go. So hopefully this series is going to prove more valuable to you than it would be if you paid for my time. Now, ultimately, what we've got here is we've got a live business that we're going to use. We're going to increase its ability to be seen in Google and you're going to see it from scratch all the way. We're going to look at the analytics we're going to check insights. We're going to optimize it. And so as we do this on a live business, you'll be able to follow along and you can do the same on your business too. So this is a real value. Make sure you click the alert button so you don't miss the next video as it's released. So let's now jump straight in and see how you can complete your listing the easiest way and also get to the point of verification. So the very first thing to do before you really start optimizing and adding uh, business is you need to just see whether or not it needs to be claimed first of all. So I'm going to type into Google the name of the business that we're looking at and it's LaRue Window Cleaning and you notice that it's already been registered. Now you may ask yourself why has that already happened? There's a few options here. It could be that you've registered beforehand and then forgotten about it. It could be that you've had someone else register it for you. Now you might say well how can anyone do that? But you notice that it still enables you to uh, claim it. So if you own this business, then you can still claim it. Um, so even though some of the information is correct, most of this could have just been entered from either their website or it could be from their Facebook page. Uh, you notice that they're using Yell as well, so it could be from there. So what happens is there are people that work for Google or there are local guides and they can just go to the map and they can then add a business that they're aware of and then that can be added too. And then once the owner realizes that it's been registered, they can make a claim for it. So looking at this by the looks of things, it's either been slightly registered or it needs to be fully registered, but it's got a bit of information. So it's got a telephone number. It's got a yale.com page related to it. So let's just go to there and see. So that's probably where this address has come from. And again, this all kind of ties up. There's some ratings and reviews, which is always good to have as well. So what we're going to do is for our client, we're going to make sure that this is consistent with 
here's registration here but we're also going to get this all up and running so for today's lesson it's probably going to be just about making sure we've got full ownership of this on behalf of our client and so to do this it would be a case of going into here own this business well I don't personally own it but I'm being asked to manage it for the owner so I'm going to click that so it's given me the opportunity to manage this now so I'm going to click that so I know that LaRue window cleaning is the business name so I'm going to go next and then the category that fits the business. Now, what I would do at this stage is I would go to Google Maps and I would put in there window cleaner. And the purpose of this is just to see what category is being used by those that are coming up number one. I notice here window cleaning service, window cleaning service, window cleaning service. If I go to the next page, window cleaning service. So that tells me that window cleaners use that category as the main category. Now that's not to say that there might not be other categories that you may want to consider, but initially I'd go for the one that's really the most closest to what you're looking for, and that would be window cleaning service. So let's go back to the registration. If I start typing in window, and I see here window cleaning service and just checking there's nothing else that's obvious it's not tinting it's not a supplier so that would be the category that initially I go for now of course you can always change this in the future now I'm going to click next and this is their address which is correct so I'm going to go next and that's fine too that's where it's based so do you also serve customers outside this location? For example, if you visit or deliver to your customers, can you let them know where you're willing to go? So it is a service, it is outside of that location. So yes, he serves outside the location. Add the areas that you serve. You can list your service areas below. They will show up on your listing and help you bring in relevant customers. Well, again, this can be changed in the future, but for now, I'll cover the Bournemouth Pool and Christchurch area. I'm just checking his Facebook page and that is the correct number and he can get a free website here so we're going to look at that on another lesson get a free website based on your info so we will click that so there you go so we've now got I'll be able to manage LaRue window cleaning service on behalf of this person I click finish and now it's a case of verification so I'm going to get the owner which is uh, uh, LaRue to get a text so he'll get a text I'm going to let him know now and then we'll see if he can come back to me with that text number now there is an option that you can go for the postcard method which can take up to four days to arrive but at the moment we'll go for the text and see if that works so I've now got the verification code I'm now going to click it and that's it, I'm now verified to authorise and manage this on behalf of my client. Get started adding photos, replying to reviews, creating posts and more. And that's where we're going to go for the next lesson is what happens when you click here, what do you then do? So we're going to go through to that and that will be on the next tutorial. So in today's video, consistency is going to be really important. So as we go through the rest of this registration, you'll notice that we'll be referring to other areas of the business. So maybe your business has already been established on Facebook, maybe it's been on LinkedIn, could be it's been on Yale or a checker trade. And it's important to take the established information and use that when you are completing this registration. Why? Well, because consistency is king. And as much as everything needs to be consistent, don't keep reinventing the descriptions or the photos or the keywords or the categories, because as soon as you start integrating different ideas every time you register your business, you're going to get an inconsistency which Google doesn't like. Google wants to know that you're trustworthy and that when it, when it gets the information about your business, that is consistent with what the web already knows about your business. So we're going to see the importance of consistency in those areas today. So this is the third episode in a series of episodes where we've verified the business now in previous episode two. And we now have to make decisions about what services and in fact that affects the categories. 
So what are we going to learn in today's video? Well, we're going to pick the exact services that your business does. So it's important to make sure that you don't just pick all the services thinking that gives you more of a chance in different arenas. It doesn't work like that. You have to actually pick the ones that are relevant to your business. So there's a reason for that, which we'll see later in a, in a further video. We're also going to look at the importance of making sure you've got the right hours. And also, how do you write a good description? How do you get the right keywords into that description too? Well, we're going to look at a starter on that, and then we'll show you another video later that will show you a bit more detail of where you can find keywords and integrate them into your business. So let's go back to our original uh, business, LaRue Window Cleaning, and let's see how we can progress this further along in its registration. So we've got the window cleaning is the main service that's offered, but actually our client also offers these services which have been suggested by Google. So just go through them with your client and just make sure that these are services they offer. And the reason this is important is if you don't offer these services and then a person contacts you because you're saying on Google that you do, then that's a really negative impact on how you're viewed. You may get a bad review for that too. So don't don't think that by claiming everything that gives you the most uh, chances of getting business because that isn't the most uh, successful way to handle customers if you say you offer something and you can't offer it. So in this case, LaRue Window Clean Services do offer these services. That's good. So I'm going to click save. And now it's about business hours as well. So you can skip this if you don't know what your business hours are. I'm going to contact my client now. So my client uh, has 24 hours on Yelp and that's what he wants to do here. So again, it's important to make sure you have consistency. So he has 24 hours here on Yelp and that's what we're going to put here as well. So 24 hours on each one. So the key thing is, is just to bear in mind that people potentially could contact you uh, it's unlikely that you'll need a, an emergency uh, window cleaner, but uh, even so, um, if they're happy to take texts and uh, phone calls or uh, messages, then obviously that reflects what you're prepared to do. You can change this in the future if that's the case too. Now, when it comes to the business description, uh, this is where you get the information about the business and you've got 750 characters to fill in here. And I think it's important to put the key words that are relevant to your business. So things like gutter cleaning, window cleaning, window cleaning services, reliability, uh, those types of things you need to include in here. Now, I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel because it should also be consistent with your website, with other references. Uh, let's just see what we've got written here on um, Yale. So on this part here, you need to really think about some of the services that we've looked at already. So you remember we saw gutter cleaning services, we saw uh, roof light, light services, having them cleaned. Um, so you want to bear those things in mind. You also want to bear in mind the areas you're serving. So depending on the cities, the towns nearby, you want to include those as well. So if I just, I've just written a, a few moments worth of article, let's see, that comes out of 546. Now ideally, I would try and fill it up to the 750. It's also known, uh, obviously check for spelling, which I'll go through in a second, but it's also known that the first 250 or so characters are the most important when it comes to how Google views it as well. So let's just go through this. So I've mentioned the name of the company right at the beginning because that's important. And also this is their kind of um, tagline. So I got that again from looking here, make your home shine. So that's the part there. And then you want to really show that you've got experience. You're trying to build trust, experience as well as important um, so that you're viewed as an authority in what you're doing. So with 12 years of experience, I mentioned there, uh, they've got a strong portfolio of returning customers. Uh, and then I move into going away from the cleaning idea and more into the area that you serve. So Bournemouth, Christchurch, and of course it's based in Southbourne. And then I then go back to some of the cleaning services, so the gutter cleaning, the power pressure washing, the roof or skylight cleaning, and then what should they do? So now they know you do these things, they know where you're based, then it's give us a call. It's how they're gonna look after you with the customers. They you know, make sure that everything's met, all the needs are met and so on. So there you go, that's, that's my suggestion there. Just go for a bit of a spell check. So 
So there you go, that's now completed. And as I said, you can revisit this in the future, but for now I'm gonna save that. And now they want photographs. And that's what we're gonna cover in our next tutorial. So we've almost completed the registration then of this business, but there are just a few more things we're going to need to look at. Uh, we're gonna to need to look at the photos and how they're going to be associated. And of course, they're often used in the knowledge panel. So we'll come on to see the importance of selecting the right photos soon. You may have heard me mention keywords and particularly with regards to that description. So how can you find the right keywords for your business? How can you make sure that you've got the right keywords so that when you write posts and descriptions, you include the right keywords for your business there too? You know, photos are one of the most underestimated, but one of the most important parts of your Google My Business optimization. And that's true when you're setting your account up in the first place. Now, as you'll know, this video is part of a series where we're looking at setting up a business, making sure that a listing is accurately put together. And photos is one of the most important parts of this. Google makes that clear. And I'm gonna show you why we can say that. And also some of the statistics that show how impactful Google is on your business. So in this video, we're going to see what types of photos you should be adding to your listing or to your Google My Business. We're going to see the importance of adding your logo and how you can add your logo to your listing. And this is going to be a really useful part of the video when we get to it. How can you take the photos that you've uploaded on Facebook or Yelp or Instagram or any other third party platform? How can you take those photos and then get them onto Google My Business? Now, there's a few ways to do this. and I'm going to show you a few of those ways in the video. So if you use Instagram or Yelp or Facebook, you're going to find this really useful because sometimes you can't save the image from that process and get it into Google My Business easily. Well, I've got a great tip for you if you use Chrome browser. Now, how important do you think photos are when it comes to making a sale or your consumers or potential clients? Do you think photos are affecting how they purchase? Well, give a comment down below if you've seen any of your photos have an impact on how people perceive your business or your company. Put a note down below. And of course, while you're here, make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Make sure you subscribe if you've not done so already so you don't miss the next video. And of course, you need to click that alert button if you want to know when the next video is released. Now, did you know that Google thinks that photos are one of the most important factors when it comes to Google My Business and the ranking of your business? And I'm going to show you a bit later in the video why we can say that and the proof behind it. So if I was to summarize the importance of photos, I'd say it's about the quality and not the quantity. I would say it's about the regularity as well as the quality. So when you think of your photos, now you don't want to overly optimize your photos so they look so professional that people then fill their stock photos. Just to say on that, if you add stock photos, if you go to say iStock or you go to Getty and you purchase photos and then you upload those as if they're your business, that will not work. Google is clear on making sure in their terms and conditions that stock photos will be removed. So don't think that way. What Google want you to do is take raw photos of your workers at work. So in the case of a window cleaner, take a photo of the window before it is cleaned and after it is cleaned. And we're going to see that in our video in a moment. So don't overly optimize the photos. On the other hand, they need to have a quality and don't think just in terms of quantity but think in terms of regularity. So on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, update your photos. Let me just show you why I say that Google is keen on making sure that you use photos. Here's the clue in Insights. You notice there that they want you to have views. They want you to compare it to others. They want to see the quantity and the quality of your photos. So photo views versus your business against other businesses come out there in their breakdown of insights. So one of the things you want to do is always make sure you're beating your competition. Make sure that you're always ahead of your competition. You can guarantee the majority of people are not going to be looking at their insights and seeing whether they're beating their competition. Now, every business is different here, so don't get hooked on a particular number. 
just get hooked on what your competition is doing here in Insights. So what type of businesses would really benefit from really high quality photos? Well, cleaning businesses such as the one we're looking at, window cleaners, you want to have a nice clean window to show your clients. So if it means going back again and taking a better photograph, then that would be a consideration. But think of flower shops. You shop with your eyes, it says, or you eat with your eyes as well. Uh, and both of those are true. So think about with flower shops, you might look at several businesses of local flower shops and you might just select the business to contact purely based on the bunch of flowers or the colours that are being used in their main photo. And think about food. If you go to a restaurant and you look down the menu, you may actually pick what you're going to eat because you see the photos of what you're going to order. And that would be the same on Google My Business. When you're looking at restaurants, you want to know that it's not greasy and dirty. You want to see clean kitchens. You want to see well-presented food. For me, I think food should always be presented on a white plate. Now, that's just my, my view, but that's because it gives that clean feel. It feels like you know exactly what it is that you're about to digest. So photos are really important, particularly on things like restaurants and cleaning businesses. And as we mentioned, flower shops, jewelers as well. You often want a nice white background when you're showing jewelry. So just think in terms about presentation when it comes to your photos. But on the other hand, don't overly do it. So a car mechanic, you'd expect his hands to be dirty to some degree. There has to be kind of a photo in line with what other photos are doing in your profession. Sometimes it's good to get a few statistics on how photos are impacting businesses. So just bear in mind that 42% of people may request driving instructions from seeing a good photo. 35% are likely to click through to your website after seeing a good photo on Google My Business. Uh, those are both facts from Google. Uh, also Bright Local, uh, another uh, SEO type of style company, they suggest in their study that 60% of consumers continue to make decisions after seeing a good photo. So the point is, is photos have a massive impact on your business. So don't just upload anything you can find. If you're going to do that, then certainly readdress it later. Now, in the video I'm about to show you, which is the live video that we're going through together as we optimize LaRue window cleaning services, as we go through it, initially, I had some really poor photos, which I kind of bring to your attention in the video, but later I found some better photos. So I'm going to show you both sections of that video. And as we go through it together, just notice how there are various ways in which you can get your photos from your previous uploads, whether it's on Yale, Facebook, Instagram, or perhaps other areas as well. In this case, the Instagram photos were far better. And you'll notice how I used them and uploaded them to his Google My Business account. So we're still completing the profile here for LaRue window services or window cleaning services. And now we're at the point where it's asking us to add photos. Now it could be that you've already got photographs and there are photographs if I look on here, I'm sure there'll be some photos. If not, there'll be some on Facebook. I think Facebook uh, may have some, let's just go back. So if I go to Facebook and I notice on the photos and I've got these photos here. So I can download some of these photos and I can add those in a moment. And really you're looking for befores and afters. So we've got some befores and afters here, which are really helpful. Uh, that's always helpful. But what does, what does those, if I look at those photos, maybe they just lack a little bit of, uh, of depth to show perhaps the height. Oh, that's a good one. That shows the roof light. So that would be a good one to use. So you're looking particularly for photographs that show the the details, but at the same time, the extremes. And also you want bright photos if you can. So the fact that that's a, a bright photo stands out, which is useful. It might be a case of you upload some of the photos you've got initially, but then you think about how you can improve the photos. And let me give an example. If I go to London, again, it's always good to go to where there's high competition. So if I go to London, I'm just gonna look through. So this here shows the poll system being used. So that's good from the point of view. It shows um, the various poll systems and the heights. So if I click on that one, for example, so there's a bit of exposure of their uh, company. You get an idea of the, the height as well that they, they can go to. So there you go, there's another one there of using the pole system. So you might want to get some good high quality photos on a nice blue 
color sky day. I'm not saying these are particularly great photos, but the, the point is the person understands the importance of the branding and at the same time to display the height as well. So if I was looking for uh, employing a cleaner, if those things were important to me, of course, then that would stand out. Let's just go back to a couple of other examples. See, this wouldn't work because it's not really telling me anything. It's just telling me where they're based. So, so a lot of businesses haven't added their photos. And again, the same here, it's just a street view. But here they've gone for the products. They've really gone that this, this person understands the importance of photos. Look at the quality of these photos as well. Um, that's a really good high quality photograph. But it's a bit small actually, but they have put the branding on it as well, which is important, which we'll come on to. So they, they do understand the importance of branding, the befores and afters. So there's a few good examples there. So hopefully you're getting a good idea as to what you really should be aiming for when you get these photographs. Again, some good quality photos here as well. So let's go back to where we were. So Google does give you that information if you, I mean, you can click learn more and it'll tell you more about this. But here you can add photos, which we're going to do in a moment. But here, look at the examples. So, so they've given an example here of cleaning itself, uh, that if you're a plumber, you're at work, and then the after effect as well. The idea is, is the photo should be appealing. And notice as well, well-lit, straightened photos tend to be easier to read. So that would be the way forward. We won't skip this, we will add some photos now. So what I would do is I would go to the Facebook page here and I'm gonna need the logo. So if I click on that, and then if I do a save image as, so I did a right click, save image as, and I'll just call that logo. I'm gonna save that to my desktop and I'm gonna go back a good quality photo. So maybe this one, so look. The trouble is that has the, 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 that has the person taking the photo, so that's not particularly good. So that's a before and after. That shows the height, which is good, but it doesn't give it the perspective. So you don't know how far up that is, but it still does demonstrate the height. So I'm gonna take that one. So if I do a right click, save image as, and I'm gonna put on their height, just so I know why we've put that photo in. So that's the before and after as well, which is good. So we could do um, before. So rather than height, maybe we should call that one after. So again, you've got some before and afters here as well. And that's great to see the, the cleaner wall there as well. So that's the, the pressure, the, the, the water pressure, isn't it? So let's, um, so the difficulty is with befores and afters, you don't really get that opportunity to display it in the same way, but um, you could certainly, on a website, you can do that. That's a good photo as well, the clean window. But I think it's fair to say that you'd probably need some better photos than this. Um, going forward because you need to understand a bit more about trying to get perspective and a bit more uh, clarity on what it is uh, that you're taking a photo of and that's what we saw on some of those other photos in the London cleaners as well. So I think that's enough for now. There are more that can be added. Certainly it's something that will add to enhance the business. So all you do is you click on, you click on that and then you just drag them across. So I'm going to go to the laptop where I saved them I'm going to drag these ones across and that will then upload to the server. So there you've now got your initial photos to start with. And that of course, Google is a business that makes money, so they want to advertise. But at the moment, of course, Google My Business is free advertising, so you don't need to concern yourself with advertising initially. Um, it will give you a boost, but at the moment you want to see kind of how much business can you get for free. So we'll click on skip. Your business profile is almost ready. You can continue making updates and edits to your profile at any time. So this is the point where we wanted to get to. So let's click continue. And there we are. So we're now into the section where there's going to be plenty more to do. Uh, so you'll want to join me on the next video where we'll go into a lot more detail on this. But uh, this is going to be the next stage on the, your plan. And we'll work through that together as well. 
But actually, I did notice that the Facebook images I used, the photos I used, weren't particularly good. When I spoke to the business owner, they did point me to their Instagram account. And when I go into their Instagram account, I noticed that their photos are so much better. So they've got like an individual photo with the before and after. And again, you can see it here. You can see the blue sky as well. So they've got some really good photos here. So these are the ones really that we were, we were after initially. We've even got the branding here of the van. Uh, the height is coming through a bit clearer on these photos, the difference between the before and after. So these photos are much, much more useful and are going to be much more helpful to really explain to customers or potential customers the reason why they should go with this window cleaner. So the question is, how do you get these good photos? How do you get these before and afters off Instagram? Well, one of the things you might need to do is first of all, go into the, the website, instagram.com, then put in the owner. And of course, if you've linked, you need to just access login as well. I think you need to be logged in to access Instagram and you have to be following as well. So in this case, that's, that's what I've done. I'm now going to click on this photo and you'll notice if I do a right click as I was doing before, you can do save as, but if you do save as, but what that does is just produces files and it's not really particularly helpful. What you want is you want this image file. And the way to do that is to click on it so you get it to its largest view, which is we've got here. If you then go to inspect, now you need to be in Chrome browser. If you click inspect, and then you want to just make sure you are definitely inspecting that area there. And that takes you to you notice if I move around, this is code. You don't need to know code to get the photo in a high quality. What you will need to do is just hover over the area that has the image in. And you notice here, just above it, it's then got pictures of this image. That's 598 by 598 pixels there, it shows. And you're looking for the largest version of that uh, image. So I'm just going to check to see, that's a 598. They're all 598s by the looks of things. And that's a case then of, if you now go and right click on it, and you then go open a new tab, and that's now opening that image in a new tab. So you might need to rewind that again. I could go for it again, but if you rewind it again, just make sure you understood that. If you now do right click on this one, save image as, and now you get a genuine JPEG image, I'm gonna save it on there and that's the image. So I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll do it again. We'll go for it, the whole thing again. So let's go for another decent image. And this time we're gonna save the next one here, this one. So you click on it, inspect, you make sure you're in Chrome. You then go one above where it's gone to. So one above, you open that up, you hover over, you make sure that there's no, so 600 is 600 by 600. You're looking for potentially the highest, so 600 by 600 is the highest one it's giving. You right click on any of those that have got that 600 by 600. You then go open a new tab at the top. So there's a nice large version there. You then do a right click, save image as, and you've now saved the image. You notice there, there's the other one in our desktop view and save that one. And that's it. So I've now got these two images. So let's go back to here. So I'm gonna add those as well. Click on photos. And there's some important things we need to do here. We need to go through all of these as well. But before we do that, I'm just gonna add those two photos as well. So I'm just gonna drag those two photos across or you could select them as well. Uploads them. And there they are, it's two great photos, much better than what we've got before. Notice how gray and bland these are to look at. Notice how exciting these ones are, showing the visual differences as well, the befores and afters makes a big, big difference. So there you go, we've now got some high quality photos. We've got some of the original Facebook photos. That's how we're going to do it. In the next stage, we're now going to see how you choose your logo photo. In fact, we could just do that one as well. Let's just choose photo. Now, you've already got it in your scrapbook because we've already uploaded it. So you don't need to upload it again. So I'm gonna click on that. And now you just need to make sure that when you have your logo, you want it to be as large as possible. But at the same time, you don't have the opportunity, it has to be square. 
and you want to make sure that the margins are identical either side to the furthest part of the logo. So that's about right. We could put it up or down a bit if we wanted, but I think we want it roughly in the center. So that we'll go for that and we'll then set that as a logo. And there you go, that's our first logo. That's the, one of those three that's taken care of. And if you want to see how that looks now, let's just go back to a search for So there you go, so that's come up, the rear window cleaning, and now we've got a logo there. So that's how you get your logo to start with. And look also, those images we've uploaded are now appearing. So already, this is beginning to pad itself out a bit more with information that's gonna make people go, oh, okay, so they do that, that's good. I can see the difference there. Now, how you control those photos, uh, we'll do some experiments to see how can, can we control which ones are shown. At the moment, there's so few, we can see that the one of the very latest photos we've got loaded is showing. If we go back to in here, you notice that is the latest. Now, are we able to swap these around? Well, again, that's something we'll look at in a later video. So now we've got some decent photos uploaded to this LaRue Window Cleaning Services account. And in the future, we're going to readdress and add some better photos too. But initially, we've got some good photos. And you'll see how those have an impact in the coming weeks ahead as people initially find his business and find these before and after photos. Now, you may have heard at this stage, people speak about geotagging photos. What's geotagging photos? Well, when you take a photo on your camera, you can have it so that the GPS location is also embedded into the file. And then if you upload that photo, it tells wherever you're uploading it, that kind of meta information can be read by Google or by search engines or robots. You can then see, okay, this photo was taken here with this GPS location. And so then it tells the person, the search engine, where that photo was taken. So if you think about it, if you've got local businesses and you're acting on a local basis, then that GPS information confirms to Google that you're acting on a local basis. Now, as it works out, at the moment, that information gets stripped out in Google My Business, but it doesn't get stripped out if you upload those photos to your website or to some of the other uh, third-party social media accounts. So if you're blogging using WordPress.com or Medium, or if you're uploading information to Facebook or Twitter, Again, I can't say for all of them, but some of them don't strip that information out. So it's worth having that GPS, it's worth geolocating that information to your photos if you can. Of course, every building needs good foundations and your Google My Business is no different. If you get the foundations incorrectly, you can then build on that and you'll see the impact that has on your Google listing as it begins to grow from the right process. So this is an important video just to help you make sure that you get the right things in place at the right time. In this video too, we're going to touch on how you can get a free website that comes from within Google My Business. Most people don't even know it's there. So I'll show you how you can get that and how you can optimize that too. And also you get an opportunity to see how in our example, the listing is beginning to grow, how it's viewed in the search terms, how it's viewed in Google Maps. We're gonna see how LaRue Window Cleaning Services is starting to look to the public now as it's beginning to be released. So, so far in this series, we've seen how to register or make a claim for a business on Google Maps. We've then registered it. We've then made sure we've got all the accurate information in there, so like name, address, phone number. We've made sure we've used keywords in the description. We've seen the importance of uploading the logo, just adding a few photographs, and we've even shown you how to get photographs from Instagram or from Facebook that have been used for your business. Not always easy to save these photos, but I've shown you how to do that on one of the previous videos and how to get them into Google My Business too. So at this point now, we've done all the kind of the basic foundation work, and we're now looking to start building and improving the ranking of this listing. So how do we go about that? We'd be pleased to know that Google doesn't hide the secrets of what it's now requiring from you. In fact, since this video was made a couple of days ago from the previous one, we've received an email that tells us how our ranking and listing is coming together. 
And also we've received some edits from Google staff where they've put some orange edits in as to what they now are recommending as being correct. So we're going to review those two orange edits. We're also going to look at that email and see how that helps us to grow the business in a way in which Google is asking us to do so. And that's always been my recommendation is rather than fight Google, try and work with Google if you want to get the most out of your optimization of your Google My Business. So once you've registered your business with Google My Business, you'll then probably over the next few days receive an email as I've done here, which is just a recognition that now this listing is live. So it shows on the map where it is. It starts to show you how it's going to look if people come across it. So you notice at the moment it has no reviews, but the category is window cleaning service. You can have directions, calls, the website, which we'll come on to in a moment. Also, you've got the address, the hours need uh, replenishing if they've not been done, the telephone number and so on. And what this is, is just showing you roughly what you've now signed up for. But it does give you a couple of other things as well. I just want to show you this. It'll show you how it's seen by customers if they view it on a search. Let's just click that. And that comes up and it shows you now how it looks on a search. And you notice here as well, it's got the logo. It shows how many views it's had. You can start to now do editing. And this is now beginning to help you to see what you need to improve your local ranking. Now, it's so often the case that people try and second guess Google, but Google's really good at spelling out all the things they want you to do. Now, of course, they do want you to create an ad. So that's the one thing you probably don't need to do. Um, but also they want you to complete the profile, which we'll come onto on a, a video in the next few weeks. It also wants you to post updates get your first reviews, add exterior photos. So we're going to run through all these things with you and just so that you understand not only what to do and show you how to do it, but also I'm going to show you tips along the way as well, things that Google won't tell you about that's going to help you. So that's the reason really you need to subscribe and click that alert bell and give me a thumbs up. And in that way, then you'll make sure that you don't miss any of those tips in the coming weeks. So what we have here is this is now made up of those photos we did in the previous uh, lesson. It's got also the area on the map and the services covered. But there's a few other things as well. It's picked up now already. It's picked up that Yale.com has got some reviews on this business. Now, we didn't add that, but that's good. That shows you that Google was aware of other references. Do you remember we mentioned Facebook and Yale? Well, Google's picked that up automatically. So that's interesting to see. Now, what I want to do is just go back to that email again. So back on that email, we saw it in the view on search. Let's just see what it looks like on maps. So this is if someone's now looking for the business, LaRue Window Cleaning. This is then how they'll find it if they go on maps, if they do a search on maps, this is how it's presented. So again, you've now got the opening hours showing here. You get this special copy plus code that you can send, which is exactly the area you're based. You've got labels you can add to it. And as we come down, you notice that it's picking up some of the photos we added. It's picked up all of the photos, the latest by the owner and a street view it's picked up as well. It shows you how it looks within yellow pages. It's also shown it's picked up on Facebook. If it does, a, these are actually web results. So it's just showing you Google knows about these things and particularly it's interested in that Yelp dot com reference because we saw that that was then showing on uh, here. So it picks up the rating here as well. So what this is teaching us really is if you want to know how to improve your local ranking on Google, then you need to make sure that Google My Business is the kind of the central part with all the spokes coming off it. And what those spokes are include things like other references, third party references on social media. So Twitter, Facebook, it will be uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, all those areas. And then it will also be other spokes that go off to places where you've got references, like it could be, so things like Checker Trade would be one that is often picked up as well. Let's just go back to our email. There's one more thing as well that's going to be really helpful. So not only do you want to see what's uh, required when you go to these uh, search and view maps, but just one other thing as well. You notice down here, learn more. So get seen by potential customers. Now, again, Google tells you what they want. They want you to add photos, to respond to reviews, post special offers and help your business show up more when people search on Google. And if you click on this learn more, you'll find it's probably the most important document you could now read. 
because here it speaks about improving your local ranking on Google. And now Google tells you what's included. Now, a lot of people say to me, well, I'm the number one in this area. Why don't people find me when they do a search? But you notice it's not focusing about how you view your business. Notice what Google says. We try to show you, so that's the searchers, not you, the business owner. We try to show you the kind of nearby restaurant that you'd like to visit. So Google takes into account three things and it just picks up down at the bottom here. It takes into account the relevance, the distance and the prominence. Now you can control some of these things and there's a video which I'll give you in a minute a reference to that will show you how you can make sure that the prominence is there and the relevance is there. But the initial distance, that's something you can't control. So if someone's around the corner and they're searching for a window cleaner, they'll find you. Whereas if someone's perhaps the other side of town or the other side of the city, well, they probably won't find you because there'll be more relevant and prominent businesses before they get to you. Now, if you're in an area where there's no one doing window cleaning for 20 miles, then distance is relative. So you still will be the nearest with relevance and prominence. Just because you think you're the best doesn't give you distance, relevance and prominence. And once you understand that, you'll realize that actually you can start working with Google. It's quite easy to understand Google if you start to just read a little bit about what they're saying and then add these little tips and get the right mentality behind it too. So we've verified the location, we've added the hours, we've seen that on previous videos. We need to get some reviews, which I'll show you how to do that in a moment. We added photos, but there's lots more things we can do, some tips and tricks, geolocating, using the logo, using text, using subliminal messages in effect to be picked up by Google on photos. We'll look at that. We've got a physical address. We've confirmed all that. We've completed the data. We need to perhaps look at attributes and categories in a, uh, another episode. And also we're going to improve the visibility by making sure we've got more information added. So if I click on manage your business, and this now brings up all the businesses. Now there's several ways you can get to here. One of the other ways you can get to this page is if you go to Google and if you just type in my business. Now, if you own more than one business, then more than one business may come up. But what it will do, it will bring up a list of some of the businesses that you currently manage. And if it's not in those top ones there where you can view the profile, then you can click on view all businesses and it comes up with the same page. Now, this is a new layout, a new dashboard they've given you, which has got a few extra nice things in as well. So we notice down here, you get a little red dot. Let's just run through this. And so you can group some of your businesses. You can do various things. You can um, up here, you'll notice you can look at those that are verified, those that are missing shop codes and so on. But we're going to ignore all those things. Let's just go back to here then. So this is, if I click on this, it will take me straight through to the business itself. And then we've got the business dashboard. So that's one way through to the dashboard. Uh, the second way is we check that it's verified so we can see that. We're going to see what that red pin dot is in a minute. In fact, it tells you it's two Google updates. If you just wanted to add photos, guess what? Google wants you to add photos. They want photos all the time. They want business photos uploaded every time you look to see what Google wants. It'll always include photos and posts. And these are the two things here. Here for posts, create a post. Here for add a photo. So if every time you log in, if you just do at least those two things along with anything else, you'll be scratching the itch that Google's got. They, they want this. This is what they're after. So this means that Google's checked and there's a couple of things it doesn't agree with. So what we see here is that uh, it says here, this location has been updated by Google users or other sources. Now the other sources might be local guides. So what local guides are is like myself, you can just go around and you can edit and you can review places. And basically the more points you've got and the higher the level you've got, the more effect you can have on, basically you've got like uh, an authority. So let's go back to here. So it means that some type of authority that Google's given, they've noticed a few things that they just want us to review. So it doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong, but we can either accept these uh, changes or we can just check them. So the service areas, Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole. So I thought that was okay. So if I click on that, let's just see, um, let customers know where your business provides deliveries or services. So it was the Bournemouth area. Let's just try that again. 
So we'll just go for Bournemouth then and see if that's, and then maybe we can add another service. Um, so let's go um, Christchurch and Pool. So it appears that it wanted it individually. That's what it appears to be. So I'm going to click on that instead and see if that is accepted. So that's now under review. So notice there it says this edit is pending moderation from Google. So they, they may want to just check that. And let's go for the other one. So they're saying this uh, website isn't acceptable. So if we click on that, now this basically there isn't a website, but if you notice on here, if I take, let's see if I'm able to take that. So that website is based on here. If I click on here, let me show you this. This is the free website that has been given. Now we're going to change this soon, but you can share the website and you can view the website. And all this done at the moment is just a very basic, there's no posts, there's, a, there's the, the galleries on there. We've got the logo on there too. But we're going to show you in a later episode how to get all this so it looks really cool. And it's like a, a genuinely um, up together website. It's never going to be a perfectly designed bespoke website, but for a window cleaner, initially this is going to be ideal. It's going to just give them something else, another way of directing it. And potentially they could purchase for £10 a year uh, the .com and then that can be kind of entwined into this. So it's a good option if you just want a very cheap website to get you up and running. Then of course, once the money comes in, once you've got the business coming in, then you may want to invest in a web designer. But let's just go for, if I view site, and what that does, that just gives me the website. So it gives me, and this is again, only got a gallery and contacts. So it's gonna need a lot of work to get this looking really good, uh, which I will do soon, but that's, not the case at the moment. So the website is going to be the free website, which I'm, I'm think I believe we're allowed to add. So I'm just going to double check that. If I add that there, yeah, that's the website. So I've got the website address. We're going to change that soon. So I'm going to do that. So what this is is just a case of taking the free website. So the fact it's got dot business dot site at the end, that's because it's from Google. So I'm going to apply that and see if that's accepted. And that's under review too. So the two edits that Google staff gave me have now gone. Um, I've now, it's that's not any longer under review. So it could be that someone's already approved that, or it could just be that uh, they can see that sensible and there may be an automated way of checking that, who knows. So for today's lesson, I think that's going to just give you a good overview. So we've seen what Google wants. We're going to work ourselves. So, so in the coming episodes, we're gonna work for each one of these and go for each one and give you all the tips you need. We're gonna optimize that website. I'm going to show you particularly how you can really get some great features on photos. I'm going to show you how insights as well. So at the moment, there's not much data, but I'm going to show you how you can really improve your listing based on the data that's coming through once this is up and running. There's a lot of information that needs filling out still, which we're going to work through um, over the coming weeks. And also the other thing as well, which is really important is if I go to here, so you notice if you go to on the home page, it's got a view plan. Google continues to update what it wants. You notice already we're getting pluses and we've only just registered this. So this is positive, 74 searches. So people are already beginning in the last 28 days to find this business and we haven't even done anything yet. Let's click on view and you notice it wants us to share our business profile and turn on messaging. And we're gonna look at things like downloading the app, getting the messaging working, what message to have, and how you can share the business. So as you'll see, over the coming weeks, we've got lots of episodes to look forward to. Hopefully you're following along. Hopefully your business is at least at this stage. If it's not, then obviously go back to the previous episodes and make sure you catch up. You can always pause this if you're not sure, you can rewind it. And of course, the beauty of this is you can put comments below this video. You can put your questions below. Just make sure that you pass this on to others that may benefit from this type of tutorial and That'll be really cool because it will help others also increase their business in a really difficult time for small businesses. So we're beginning to see how Google 
now wants you to improve your listing. We've seen there's plenty of things now we can do, which we'll do in the next few videos together. And you can also see that Google now is suggesting things that you should be considering next. So you can follow that kind of process, that order, so that you make sure that you're giving Google the very things that they're requiring. And of course, if you work with Google, they reward that by improving the listing quite dramatically. And also, if you haven't got a website, then this will improve your ranking just using the free website that Google's provided. But of course, with that website, you can do quite a few other things too. And maybe you're not familiar with the fact that this website can be have different themes, you can add your domain name to it so that it goes there as your website. You can add new photos, new posts and updates. You can give it different color schemes and fonts. So there's a load more things we didn't cover in this video that you can do with this website, which we'll probably cover in a future video. I'm going to show you how to brand your business in Google today for free. Now this is part of a series where we're taking a business and we're trying to give it strength and power. We're trying to see whether we can get it to really do well locally. But to do so, we're also going to increase its branding today. So today is all about how can we improve the branding of this new business? And as we go through this, you need to look at your business too, and then apply the principles we use with LaRue Window Cleaning Services and make sure you're doing them for your business. So this is going to be a really powerful video for you if you've not considered the importance of branding. But first of all, what is branding? Well, branding is more than just having a logo or a color scheme or a style or just a few images and a phone number. What is branding? Well, branding also includes the tone of how people perceive your business. So you may like your logo, but how do others perceive it? In fact, the Amazon CEO said this about branding. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. That's pretty powerful stuff, isn't it? So just think about that. It's not about what you think. It's about what your customers think, about what your clients think. It's about what your potential clients think. And this is often the biggest problem when it comes to web design, when it comes to Google My Business, when it comes to advertising and growing your business. Often you assume that people have the same perception as you. Nine times out of 10, that isn't the case. And so branding is not about what you perceive, it's about what others perceive. So to help us to do that, things like having a logo, having a style, having good photographs, they're all important. And Google knows the importance of branding, so much so that it has an area to see where the branding comes from and how much branding is done in the search results for your business. So for an example, if you own Starbucks, some people might search in Google search for the nearest coffee place or the nearest coffee shop, but others might search for the Starbucks near me or a Starbucks coffee shop. Now, can you see the difference? Ones use branding, ones without branding. So with LaRue Window Cleaning Services, what we're going to want to do over the coming weeks and months ahead is to get his logo and his branding and his perception in people's local minds and their heads so that when they're thinking or looking for a window cleaner, they see his branding, they see his logo. And so rather than searching for just a local window cleaner, they've seen his van perhaps uh, locally, they've made a note of it, and now they've perhaps seen a leaflet, a flyer, an advert. It's got in their head. So they then put, actually, I want LaRue window cleaning services. And then Google knows that. It recognizes that as branding. Now, why is this one of the most powerful videos that I've made so far? Well, because what we're going to do is we're going to look at quite a few things that you can use for your business for free. And Google wants you to use these things. So we are aware you can make your own video to help with your branding. You can have the marketing toolkit that Google provides for free. We can download various leaflets, various marketing uh, um, PDFs and print them off, stickers as well. So all that's for free. And also Google tells you what it requires you to do if you want to improve your branding. And we're going to see how to do that too. And Google also asks for a cover photo. So this is one of the most important photos you'll ever upload along with the logo. 
But what makes a good cover photo? What size should a cover photo be? Well, we'll look into that too. And for those that have watched the whole video, then you'll see near the end, I also provide you with seven extra things that will help you when it comes to perceiving a better, improved branding for your business. So don't miss that near the end of the video. But let's dive straight in now and see how we can improve the branding of LaRue Window Cleaning Services in this video. Google believes that branding is important and there's a few reasons why we can say this. The fact that the logo is to the forefront, one of the first things you have to do. One of the second things you have to do is put a cover a piece of information that helps you build in a bit of personality. But again, having your logo included in this, maybe some branding colors is essential too. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through these first of all as part of building our brand. Some of these things may not necessarily fit in with your branding. So for example, having interiors for a window cleaner, well, maybe we could show interiors of the window cleaning itself inside windows and so on but it's not really like an office for people to visit and with the video as well i've got a really nice marketing video area that you can go to where you can get a one minute video that google's giving away for free at the moment so i'll show you how to get that but we're going to first we'll cover on a cover the cover area now this really ideally needs to be 2120 pixels by 1192 but you can have a 1024 by 576. Uh, you used to be able to have a minimum of 400 by 270. Now, I would always suggest 2120 by 1192 because it will always shrink and it will keep its decency uh, in the quality of that image if you do that. So I've produced an image already. I'll just bring the image over. This is one here and a recommendation. So I've taken a photograph. Uh, I've taken uh, one that's got the branding already built in it as well. So this would be a good photograph. And then what I've then done is I've produced this. So this is a, the correct version. Um, let's just shrink it down a little bit. So I've put a bit of branding on it as well. Um, Google picks this up. So Google can read the lettering here. It picks up the logo. And at the same time also, you can see clean windows being shown. So it's branding along with cleaning, along with the logo itself. So that's what we're going to be using for the cover photo. So let's go back to here. I'm gonna choose that photo. I'm gonna select it from my desktop. So there it is there. That uploads and this will help build a bit more branding. So now we've got the cover photo. So where does that actually show? Well, I don't know if it will actually show yet. If I go to LaRue Window Cleaning on the branding itself. So, if, so branding is when someone actually searches, they know who you are, they're trying to find you. Now, if I refresh this, there you go. So immediately, We've now got this extra branding coming in here as well as a photo, so that's good. Though that was just the photo. Um, oh no, it is the, the actual cover photo as well. Now I've got a video that's coming out that will show you how you can control all these photographs and where you can manipulate to make sure that the right photos go in the right places. And Google does change this sometimes, so you do need to know that. So you notice, as far as branding's concerns now, if someone's looking for me, uh, we've got the branding built in here, which is actually more for us. This is something that we see as the business owner. But we've also now got these extra pictures that are picked up. So again, 29 seconds ago, I uploaded that to cover photo. That now comes out. It's got the telephone number on. It's got the branding built in as well. You notice here, we've got the branding of the logo. And here we've got the branding. If I click on see photos, and now we've got again to the fore this branding here. So we're doing all we can at the moment to help LaRue Window Cleaning be found for its branding. People need to t search into Google LaRue Window Cleaning and hopefully that's what they'll then find. Now my business itself, Zanet Design, even then it won't come up. So it appears that at the moment, if you're in England or UK, this doesn't work. Now I have got it working for one of my clients who's in America and it was fantastic what it did as well and we uploaded it and so that's what I recommend to you certainly if you're in the States that's one that works currently. So that's one video you could upload. You can just upload a video just take an mp4 video on your phone of someone at work maybe a, a, the poll mechanism. So I'm going to get my clients take some video and I'll upload that in the coming weeks ahead. 
And then interiors, it's just again about adding photographs. If you've got any photographs that show the interiors of things, then you could do so. I don't really have any interior photographs here, so I'm not going to add those because that's not really showing an accurate description if someone's looking for that. But what I will do is while I'm here, I'm going to show you also that branding and photos go hand in hand together. Now let me show you why I say that. If you click on insights, you notice here how customers search for your business. And here you've got direct or discovery. But the one thing you haven't got is branding. Now I say that because you should start to build branding. How do you build branding? Well, you get it through a few things. One is by adding photographs and two is by really advertising, making yourself known. Now I'll give you an example of why I say this. If I go to Zanet Design, which is the same report, this is my insights. And here you see there's a section for branded. Branded customers who find your listing searching for a brand related to your business. So what you want to do is you want this to grow so that in effect, you've got one third is direct customers. One third is discovery, finding you, they don't know you. And one third is to do with branded. It's where you're really beating other people, where you're amongst other window cleaners in the example of window cleaning. And yet people are finding you, they're choosing you. Why would they do that? Why would they put your brand above other people's brands? Because your logo keeps coming before them. They get familiar with it. Maybe because they see the photographs and they're impressed by your photographs. And they're just impressed by your presence on the internet. Now that takes time. That takes good reviews. That takes effort to get posts and to get information into Google My Business. So at the moment, this is a fairly new business. We've just got it up and running. You've won episode five or six. And so we wouldn't expect to see branding yet, but that's something to aim for in the coming months ahead. Now, branding is affected by getting your business ahead of the competition. And photographs are one of the ways to do this. Let me just show you here. So photo views, now you notice like over the last month, or if I go to a quarter even, you notice that regularly I'm on my business uploading more photographs than the competition. Now my competition is obviously web designers because I'm a web designer, but I'm always ahead of the competition. And again, with photo quantity, that's me. And that's customers that are putting photographs my way. Businesses like you, they're not in the same I'm ahead of the competition. And that's what we're going to do with LaRue Window Cleaning is as we start to build up his listing, you'll notice it will start to affect his visits. It will start to affect interest. He'll begin to see people inquiring, beginning to get to see his branding. And so then photo views will increase. At the moment, he's below because he's just started out. So on the whole, they average two, three, four. He averages one, three, two. And you notice they've got more photographs than he has. But consider we've only just started and we're on seven photos. It's not going to be too difficult to beat that and to keep continuously beating it week in, week out. So what have you seen so far? You've seen the insights show that branding is an important aspect. You've seen that you can do video branding if this works in your country. Another way in which you can improve your branding is through a marketing kit with Google. And let me just show you how this works. So LaRue Window Cleaning Services, there you go. So it comes up because you've registered. So if you register your business and then it's then verified, you can click on that. It's now going to find the information that LaRue Window Cleaning has, and it's going to provide you with some free materials. So you notice there your business is verified, so that's good. So we can, we've got a green tick there. And if we start coming down the page, now at the moment we haven't really got much on here. We haven't got many reviews. Um, you can pick something that would perhaps fit. So for a window cleaner, you might go through these to see which one you think would fit. But you notice at the moment, we've got various informations that you can, you can use and so on. You can download this and print it if you want to. You can change the message as well. So you might want to have the message, make a reservation for window cleaning or something like that. And if we come down, you can then have this uh, follow us on Google. There's a few other things as well. You can switch around and choose which ones you want would fit in with your business. You know, see you've got uh, QR codes, all sorts of other things you can download in these packs here and business information as well. So in this case, it's got the address or it's give us the, the phone number. You can share this as well 
by means of um, just sharing it on social media, if that's what you wanted to do, and you can manage your business as well. So there's a few things here. Now, if you had some reviews on here, it would make it uh, a bit more pertinent. At the moment, we've not really got a lot on this. We've not got to that point yet with the window cleaning service. Now, one other thing that you might want to do with branding is make sure that your website is working. And we're just going to consider that for a moment on your website and how you can start using that. And let me show you, if I go to view site, you notice now it's taken that cover and now we've started to brand the website. Now I would say that probably this green doesn't go with the, the blue that's being used. You notice the photographs are now in there. You notice that the place, the times and the phone number. So it's, this website's beginning to come together, but it's not anywhere near complete yet. Let's just consider how can we get this to look a bit more, uh, more relevant to the business that we're dealing with. Well, if you go back to website, and at this point, you need to consider really buying uh, or actually using a theme. So I would just go through the themes here and see which one would fit better. So with the website, we've chosen this theme that just makes it a bit more applicable with the, the blue. It tends to kind of look a bit more impressive with that. And there's lots of more things we can do here, some messages, some information and so on. It is a limited website, but it does give you some clues as to what you want to do. So we haven't got any posts that have been entered yet. We haven't got any testimonials, which we're going to be getting in the next few uh, um, videos uh, about us as well. We've not really got any information there, but the gallery is beginning to come together. And let's just show you how, again, you can add more images. So you can do this uh, three photos on here, or you can do it through here. So I've got a few more images I'm just going to add. So let's just add all of these. And that now uploads those photos too. So you notice now we've got these extra photographs as well on here. And if we go to view site, so you'll see the site's now beginning to come together. It just shows it looks like uh, the first um, nine photographs there. If I click on here, so at the moment you've got the gallery and you've got the contact uh, information. If I go to photos, you notice that those recent photos are now uploaded as well. So we've now got a beginning to build up the photo collection. We've got the cover photo, we've got the logo photo. We haven't added a video. We haven't added interior yet. So just one more thing regarding branding is just think about also the website name. So if you notice on, if you come down here, at the moment we're on the web, okay? So that's the site there. And what it's done is it's taken the name of the business. So it's LaRue Window Cleaning dash Window Cleaning Service. Now that's far too long to remember because then it's dot business dot site. So we want to change that. Now the way I change that is I'd go to on info, so it's taken the LaRue Window Cleaning, which is the business name, and it's then added that to Window Cleaning Service, which is the, the category, the prime category. So we've got LaRue Window, window Cleaning, Window Cleaning Service. It's a bit long-winded. So what we can do is we can change that. And it's all down to this short name. So if we just gave it LaRue, so suggesting LaRue Window Cleaning, let's just give it the Rue itself and just see how that would pan out. So I apply that, we'll see if it's available. It's got to be at least five characters, so you can't do that. So let's go for the Rue window clean. Let's try what it's suggesting and apply that. Okay, so it's now giving us the G page for LaRue window cleaning, which is fine, which we can look at that on another video. This is under review, so as always. And then we've got the LaRue window cleaning, window cleaning service. So we want it to reflect that better. So let's see if we can change that. So let's just take out this part of the address here. Let's see if it allows us to do that. So we're now going for the LaRue window cleaning business site apply. And that's under review too. But that would make more sense. We want to get this down as to a smaller, um, a smaller URL because we, we know that all free sites on Google will always end with a dot business dot site. And it's just that bit there that we can control. Now, maybe we can change this and get this a bit lower, but we'll see. I'll speak to my client as well and see what he wants to do. The other option is you can just go to 
website and you can purchase a domain and then Google will do the rest. So you could just go, right, I'm going to become LaRueWindowCleaning.com and then that gets rid of all this longer spew but it is a charge of £10 and there are a few other options as well so you might want to try something different so you could go for .co.uk you could try something different you may want to try something totally different if you go view domains and you can then see what other domains are possible probably .com would be the one I'd suggest the rewindowcleaning.com would be a good one and you could then apply that to this site so we've seen that Google My Business is full of ways in which it wants you to improve your branding and branding will take time. And that regular uploading of images, putting the logo on those images. You know, we've even will see in a future video how Google can read that logo. Google will even recognize what your images are about. It will know whether or not it's a stock photo. It will know whether or not your window cleaning photos have windows in them. It's that advanced in its intelligence now when it comes to understanding the photos you're uploading. And so when you brand and you put your logo on the photo itself, that helps give a bit of more strength in how Google perceives you. In fact, it will try and recognize the logo and then connect it to your business. So logos are really important to use as is good quality photographs. And of course, regularly uploading photographs so you beat your competition. So, so far we've seen how to register a business on Google Maps and to do it from scratch. Uh, but how did it get suspended? What went wrong? In part two, you'll see the strategy I used and you'll see also what worked and what didn't work and what caused some problems. So make sure you click now on part two.